we all think we're confident, right? On some level, if you're a leader, you're leading people, there's an inherent level of confidence you need to have that seat. Oh, man, I've been around. There's insecurity. Most leaders I've been around struggle with confidence. But they would say in a group of people, oh, yeah, I feel confident. Yes. Yeah. 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 But beneath the surface, beneath a thin veneer, there's a lot going on. Yeah. So let's talk about some of these confidence killers and how we can overcome them. Okay. What's the number one thing you go, this is leaders struggle with this and they're not talking about it? I think leaders struggle with competency. They don't know what they're doing. Um, you are really good at building houses and suddenly they move you, they quote unquote promote you, they give you more money and a fancier title and now you're in the air conditioning and now you're over all the people that build houses. And that's a different skill set or you have been a great plumber and you get recognized for that and now they put you as a team leader over 14 other plumbers. That's a different job. And so most of the time when you get moved to a leadership role, we don't have the skill set to be humble. We don't have the skill set to say, hey, I need to learn something new. And so we just do the skills that we already have harder and, and faster, right? So it's like, I'm just going to squeeze this wrench even tighter on these people, or I'll just do it myself, or um, I'll holler and yell because that worked on the job site, but that doesn't work in the HR room, right? And so the number one confidence skill I see is people just don't have, have the skill set. I'm thinking of myself one time, um, I was over all of the housing at a university, all the residence halls, um, the maintenance, the building, the getting students in, getting them out, all the stuff. And I was had to turn in a performer for a new residence hall. Like, how are we going to build this thing? How much is it going to cost? What's the debt service going to be? How can we cash flow this thing? And I didn't know anything about Excel. I didn't know anything about like Pivot tables? I, I, I'd never even heard that. I thought a pivot table is a dance move, right? And so I turned this performer into the president, who was a former CFO, on a Word document. And I, I italicized some words in it. And to I, make it fancy? Yes. And I'll never forget, he just held the paper up, and he looked at it like I'd handed him a plate with a dog turd on. He just looked at it and was like, what is this? And so from that moment, I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I actually hired a senior accounting major to sneak into my office and teach me how to do Excel. There was a set of skills I didn't know. And then when I learned Excel, I felt like the whole world opened up to me, right? But it was a skill set that I didn't have, and I was running multi-million dollar budgets, and so I I needed to learn that skill. And once I got the skill, I was instantly more confident because I knew what I was doing. So learning those hard skills is a way to overcome that lack of competency. And the soft skills, right? That will give you the confidence. Yeah. And all of that starts with humility. What do I not know to do this job well? There's some self-awareness there. Big time. Awesome. And we teach a lot of that here at Entree Leadership to help people with that, which is awesome. So next up, we have uh, another form of something we do to overcome our lack of confidence, which is getting more and more data and information. We are obsessed with more info. Um, I heard it recently said, and I loved it, that data has become our new antidote to anxiety. Mm. I just need to have one more cup of coffee. I'm going to watch one more TED Talk. I'm going to read one more leadership book and one more after that and then one more after that and one more after that. And we're trying to cram more charts and more graphs into our heads as a, as a, like a security blanket laying over the fact that we don't know what we're doing or that business is bananas or that the work environment or the economy is in the trash or whatever is going on. We just think more data is going to help us. And more data is good to, a, to, a, and to an extent, but after that, it just drowns you. Right, it's just noise, and then being able to determine the signal to noise ratio becomes almost impossible. Right, this is important for me. Like you and I've talked about this. Like I've got just a slogan that gets me through my life, and that is I've got a guy. And Dave came in the other day. Uh, Ramsey was talking to us about how bond markets are not tied in any mechanistic way to the Fed rates but the Fed rates affect the bond market rates. And he was walking us through the mechanics of that. Number one, I was like, man, that guy's real smart. He's not just on the radio. He's like real smart. But number two, I will never Google anything about bond rates. I'll never watch a YouTube video on bond rates. I'll never watch a TED Talk because I got a guy. If I have a bond rate question, I'll ask Dave. And I'll just move on with my life. If I have a hair product question, I've got a guy. His Ken name's Coleman. George. Oh, thank George you. Campbell. I'm going to ask George, right? If I got a guitar question, I ask my friend Will. I don't spend hours and hours and hours trying to get to the right fit. I just have a person in my life. Some of my my closest friends are banker or an HVAC guy or somebody who runs a, a ranch. 
I ask them questions about ranching and banking and HVAC, and it just limits the drama in my life. Yeah. And the questions and the, all of this goes back to got to have people and you got to have people that you get good wisdom from and you got to accept that wisdom and move on with your life. Hmm. Yeah, because in that isolation, there's a lot of negative self-talk and we have no one else to kind of show us reality. Yeah, there's a great Carl Jung quote, a uh, famous psychologist, and I'm going to butcher a little bit, but if you don't know who you are, there's plenty of other people who will tell you. And so you've got to have a group of people that you trust that speak into your life and you have to begin to build your, like, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm not good at. And then I'm just going to head off into the world, man. I'm not going to keep going for more information and keep watching the news and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. That's a recipe for madness. And that's one of the benefits of our advisory groups that are part of Entree Leadership Elite, where you're around like-minded business owners with our coaches helping you navigate this wild, wild west of business. Well, they've, they're and doing you go, it. oh, I'm not alone. I'm they're, not crazy. Oh, he, he's done this. He's, they're doing he's it, right? It. And so someone says, hey, I, I have a business deal. I went, and, I went and sat in on one of the advisory groups. It was a riot, number one. Um, in the chat, I was watching. They were all talking, and it was a great conversation. But in the chat, they were talking trash about each other. And I was like, these guys are actually friends too, right? So they're building relationships, which is critical. But if one person's about to have to fire somebody, it's not like, well, I'm not going to Google how to fire somebody and I'm going to watch 17 TED Talks on how to fire somebody because you're going to get 17 different things from 17 different experts. You got five or six men or women who are like, no, nah, I fired somebody yesterday and it was hard and this is what I had to do. Or I did it like this and it was a disaster. Don't do this. And so you have a group of people who are living it and doing it. And that brings me to, to what I would say is the last big issue with confidence in leaders is leadership is isolating it, you just end up by yourself. And if you've been around me, I don't know the entree crowd who's been around me. I, I just harp on this over and over. But when your body recognizes it's lonely, man, it causes chaos. It just rings every bell you've got. And if you feel like I have to, like I'm thinking back to old tribes, I got to go get the food. I have to prepare the food. I've got to like watch out for the children. I've got to do security. You can't, you can't do everything. And so it, you end up feeling unconfident of, across your entire platform because you don't have other people in your life. You've got to get other people. So if there was something you said, a leader's listening, they go, John, I know I, I suffer from one or more of these things mm -hmm. and it's killing my confidence. What would be a step to take to get in the right direction? There is none, zero, no long-term behavior change done in isolation. So I would tell people, start number one with a group. Get some people in your life, whether that's a formal group like an advisory group, whether that's a couple of friends in your neighborhood. Um, I do think proximity is really important too, having people that you just do life with on the regular. Um, and then you begin to humbly talk through what skills do I not have? Like, dude, now I'm running like an organization. I've never done this. Or my favorite is I just had a kid and now I'm a dad. I don't know what that is. My dad didn't show up. I don't have the skill set so we can freak out or just abandon or just watch Netflix or I can dig in and learn those skills, how to be a dad, how to be a mom. What are those things I need to do? So getting with a group, learning those skills, and then over time being very careful about the information we allow into our heads because those stories that other people tell us over time become the stories we tell ourselves.